Hello, it's John Gibbons from the Anfield Wrap, and this is a show called The Squad. Now, at the end of the transfer window, myself and Neil Atkinson decided to look at the squad uh, from front to back and analyse it and see where we thought the gaps were, see where we thought Liverpool have left themselves a little bit light, or on a positive note, where Liverpool feel particularly strong. It was originally going to go out all for our subscribers, but we decided to put one of them out uh, for free. So we're giving you little tasters over the next few days of some of our amazing subscription content. So this is the squad this is the midfielders so if you enjoyed this uh, the attackers is available for our subscribers yesterday and then the defenders one is going out early next week so there's plenty more there for those of you who do subscribe but in the meantime enjoy me and neil atkinson analyzing the midfielders currently on the books at liverpool here we go Hello, it's the squad. It's John Gibbons with Neil Atkinson. Your run through uh, the Liverpool squad, uh, position by position. If you're not watching the forwards one uh, that came out, uh, that is available to watch as well. But we're going to talk about the midfielders today, and there is eight of them uh, up there that we have ended up with. Uh, we've added Harvey Elliott uh, from the summer because he's now a sort of midfield option as well. So I'll throw in uh, first of all the, the the team that started against Chelsea. Um, so we had uh, Fabinho holding. It was Henderson left hand side in this one, and Harvey Elliott. Um, right, that just, just sort of allows us to see them as options. Um, so we've got Curtis Jones there, who didn't even make the bench against Chelsea. Uh, we've got Naby Keita, who's obviously started two games. Uh, Alex Oxley chamberlain who's a bit of a forward option, but mainly sort of, I think, more a midfield one. And Thiago, of mm -hmm. course, who came on, and James Monday, who was injured at the weekend. Uh, so first of all, as an eight, uh, and as a sort of range, uh, what did you make of that instinctively, Neil? Instinctively, there's two things. The first thing is, I think that we're we're relatively well stocked. Um, I think that it's 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 a good it's a good set of footballers in a lot of ways, uh, and there's the numbers there to be able to get the job done over the course of the season. The flip side is, this is a really good example of one of those. One of the other shows we did about this was to talk about age ranges. Yeah. And there isn't a single one of these players who's between sort of 22 and 26 now. I think I'm right in saying. So there isn't a single one of these footballers who's moving through into their peak years. They're either at the peak years. Uh, at the end of the peak years for James Milner, it's fair to say, you know, off the peak years, and, and I, he'd hate me for saying that, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, but he's going to knock around to ours at some point because we keep talking about his age. And then you've got Curtis and um, Harvey, both of whom I, you know, really think are very, very impressive footballers. But they've both got even another couple of years, in Harvey's case, even maybe four years, development through to become the footballer they're going to be, if you sort of see what I mean. So in the, in the immediate short term for this season, I think we're really well stocked. In the idea of where we are in as many as 18 months' time, I feel as though the balance isn't quite right. Yeah, yeah, no, that's an interesting one. In terms of the balance of, of the skill set, then, what do you sort of well, make of that? Let me, let me move this around. So I think, forget that, so ultimately I think that the first choice six is Fabinho and the second choice six is going to be Jordan. Yeah. But I think that, obviously, Fabinho and Jordan can both play in the same team, they just do against Chelsea, and I think within there as well, there'll be the idea that Jordan and Thiago can play in the same team, Fabinho and Thiago can play in the same team. So these three, I expect to see two of them on the pitch a lot. So if we put these three over here and then move these five to, to sort of here for a minute, the reason why I think we're well stocked is I think if these these three will get somewhere for Liverpool, Champions League and league starts between eighty and ninety. I think it's fair to say, Seems reasonable. and it does seem reasonable. You know, Henderson. People say Henderson. I, including me, I've pointed out Henderson's injury prone, but he's averaged you know somewhere in the last sort of three or four seasons, he's averaged somewhere between sort of twenty five and thirty one, thirty two league Champions League starts. Yep. Thiago, I'd expect the same, and then Fabinho, I'd expect to get the most games to so say about thirty five. So if Fabinho gets about thirty five, these two get about. 26, then that gets you to 87. Yeah. If you play 51 Premier League and Champions League games, which is the most you can play, that's getting the final, mm -hmm. and you play 4-3-3 every week, there's only 153 appearances, starts available. So what that means is, if we're right about this, these lads get 80 to 90, then that means that these boys over here are getting, between the five of them, are getting between 60 and 70. Yeah. They can't get any more. There's not, it's not possible. Unless, <laughs> unless, you know, Harvey can get more because he can come up here. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, Kurt, maybe Curtis can come up here. Maybe, uh, may, you know, maybe that, that those three could possibly feature in this area. But not loads more. And Paul Milner's lost his left back gig. And Paul Milner has lost his left back gig now. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe Milner will get a, a, a touch of right back gig and we can perhaps come on to that. Uh, you know, that's possible. I don't quite see it. Maybe Curtis could get a bit of time at right back. It's possible. I don't quite see it. My point is, though, there's only 60, 70 midfield field starts for those five to go around yeah and that's why 
we can then do there. And I understand why people worry because they've gone through periods of time. You know, basically, Oxley Chamberlain doesn't play for a season mm. and he's had injuries in his career. But he made 40 match day squads last season, Oxley Chamberlain, and we're getting him in the rhythm of playing. Keita was more available than we sort of remember because the manager didn't want to use him last year for whatever reason. The question therefore becomes does the manager of these other lads, does the manager, I've just moved it all around there, that was magic. <laughs> does the manager, you know, he uses Harvey at the weekend. So Harvey's now on two starts of yeah. my number. Milner's on one and he, he looks like he's going to be third choice six, but I don't expect to see him there very much. Kite is on two. Uh, Chamberlain may have started against Burnley, it doesn't come, come for him uh, on the day. Uh, there. Um, my sort of wide thing, does Chamberlain start against, he starts against Norwich, doesn't he? He does, he starts against yeah, Norwich. Yeah, yeah. So he's already on one, if you sort of see what mm. I mean. And we've shown that we can we can focus in this. So I'm I'm fine with all of this, but I think we've got to be aware. Like Kaita's agent supposedly he's kicked off a bit, saying well, my, my client might not get playing time at Liverpool this season. Yeah. And you can see his point in, in yeah, terms yeah. of what I've just said. Yeah, yeah, and it's always a thing to sort of consider. It's always a thing to sort of consider. In terms of the, the balance of, of, of attributes you see there, there's a lot of talk around, around goals from midfield. Is that something that sort of concerns you? You, you know, in terms of looking at it, I mean, there's, there's obviously there's ways of getting goals midfield, and, and and you sort of pick him a little bit more because yeah. he because he's on the pitch, you know, for the, you know, but but is he doing this sort of other stuff? Do you want where are you, where are you with that? I think I think it's more so the the Wijnaldum goals thing was that he scored big goals. Yeah. So if you want to talk about missing Genie, I'm not worried about Genie's goal contribution. I'm worried about his big goal contribution. You know, to to do a bit of a. If it hadn't been for around the game at the weekend against Chelsea, that very much feels like a second half where on 70 minutes, Genie Wijnaldum breaks the game yeah. in a bit of a mad way. And, he, and we haven't got him now. He scored big goals. But Henderson's had big goals and big goal contributions between 2018 and 2020. So I think ultimately what you're looking for if you want to talk about goals is, let's just imagine Fabinho gets two. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine Henderson gets four. Let's imagine Thiago gets four. And then what we then need is, and that's where it is interesting with these other lads, they almost need to collectively be chipping in with 15. Now it could be that Harvey gets eight of them, Chamberlain gets six of them, and the, the others just share one between the three of them, however that would work. But if they're then chipping in there with those ones, then you end up in a situation where you are talking about more goals from midfield. Yeah. In, and I'm only really talking here about Premier League and Champions League games. I'm not bothered by FA Cup or, or League Cup games. I'm really not. But the idea then that you know if you were to be sort of looking at this group and saying they get 21, 22, 23 goals between them, that could be really useful for Liverpool. Yeah, you talked a lot about in Chelsea about, about Henderson's position, about him struggling a little bit more sort of left hand side. If we sort of say that you know these two are more or less first choice and you want to see him sort of right side more more than not, sort of who, who do you think are the strongest contenders then in terms of the area of the pitch? Because Thiago, you know, the, those three we haven't seen a huge amount of them, you know, as a three yet because of sort of injuries and stuff. But who do you think works best in terms of that left hand side? So I think I, I like Thiago there, uh, and I think he's 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 sufficiently technical to be able to get the, move the ball quickly. He is right side. But he moves the ball really, really quickly. I like Jones there. I like Kaita there. Um, I'd love to have seen Elliot there. I think Milner works there. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I'm not. I don't, I'm not sort of. I'm not left sort of yeah. going. Oh my God, what are we going to do there? Um, and, but it is interesting to me. For instance, with Elliot, like he has just sort of all the way through preseason when he's played, he's played off the right in the middle. Mm. Now that might be a bit of getting him used to midfield but keeping him close to the position he's occupied in the past. It might be that in 10 games' time, suddenly he starts popping up on the left as well. Uh, I'm trying to move the pitch back there, John, uh, <laughs> on the on screen record. So, you know, I think that maybe just maybe that that could happen. It might be, first, let's get him used to midfield, but close to where he's used to playing, and then he might move himself. Yeah. But I think any of them can sort of work there. Henderson can work there okay. It's just at that level with that speed of a game. Yeah. The other thing is, it's worth saying that bits of that game actually operated just a little bit more solely like this. To be honest with you, where Elliot is in there, but the, these two lads are very much this two, and there's that one. And yeah. then you'd be happy enough with Chamberlain to do a bit of that, with Jones possibly to do a bit of that as well. That it might be at times, if he's got Henderson and Fabinho fit, it could be a little bit more four two three one. Uh, in fact, I put Kate there and, and let him have a nice time. It was it was that with Kaito as well, wasn't it? We saw that from the first two games. The Kaito was almost alongside Fabinho, which is a bit of a surprise. Yeah, uh, and then the other uh, was was all uh, little, all alongside Milner when it was Milner. So yeah. for the first game, it was sorry, a, yeah, with Milner. Yeah. It was a little bit more like this uh, back in there um, for the first game, for instance, at Norwich. It was a little bit more um, like this. And it worked sort of that way, a tiny bit more. Whereas in the past, I think Liverpool, when they're doing 4 3 3 at the best, it's very much as quite a flat three where there is a bit of a defensive midfielder, the others can go wide and join. I like, in general, these are, these are a really good set of options. Can it, is there a world where it can all go badly wrong? Yes. Yeah. But then that's the case for every football team, you know, that what happened to us last season does not happen to anyone most seasons at the heart of the defence. 
but it could happen to some. But it could happen in any position to anyone in any given season. But for me, I'm I'm happy with this eight. I really am. As I say, my concern about this eight isn't now. My concern about this eight is in eighteen months, two years time, uh, and that's why I would still like to have seen one more added. And I've got a minor little thing that ultimately, if you are in a situation where this is your order at six, I'm not having a go at James Milner. But I feel as though there is a bit of a drop off there in terms of the way we want to play six because we put a ton of pressure on it. And that's why maybe in the first game you see Kaita closer because he doesn't want to have a Fabinho esque number six where he's got to do all the work himself. Yeah. And that's why he maybe gets a bit more of a mate. We shall see. Uh, there are the options from midfield. But uh, they're good. They are good. Uh, and the defence are good as well. And we're going to talk about them next video. <laughs> 